You may think of going to the bathroom and peeing as something that is disgusting. But without it, the toxic substances in your body would start to accumulate and you would literally die. Thanks to the kidneys, that doesn't happen. In this video, we're going to be talking about the anatomy of the kidneys and also the functioning unit that makes up the kidneys known as the nephron. We'll talk more about the function of the nephron and the different parts involved in later videos. First, we'll start with the anatomy of the kidney. And when we start, we are starting right here at a region known as the hilum. So this hilum can be thought of as a gateway or an arch through which a lot of tubes enter and exit the kidneys. For example, you have the renal artery and the renal vein. The renal artery brings in the blood that needs to be filtered and the renal vein removes the blood that has been filtered from the kidneys. The hilum is also the entrance through which the nerves that innervate the kidneys enter the kidneys. It is through the hilum the ureter emerges out of the kidneys. The ureter of course is the tube that connects the kidneys to the urinary bladder which is the structure that stores urine till it can be voided out. So when you take a look at the anatomy of the kidney, you see that the hilum sort of opens into a larger space. That space is known as the renal pelvis. And the renal pelvis is not just one open huge space, but rather it splits into different tube-like structures here. These tube-like structures or projections of the renal pelvis are known as renal calyx, which is the singular form or renal calyces. And if you take a look at the renal calyces, they sort of end up against the tip of these triangular structures. So what are these triangular structures? To understand what these triangular structures are, we have to understand that the kidney is made up of two distinct portions. One is the outer portion known as the renal cortex and the other is the inner portion known as the renal medulla. And these triangular structures are called renal pyramids. Each kidney has around 10 to 18 pyramids and the calluses are located at the tip of these pyramids because they are there to collect the urine that is formed in the pyramids. Whatever urine is formed in the medullary pyramids enters into the calluses and then into the renal pelvis and out through the ureter. That's how it is removed from the kidneys. So the renal cortex is the outer portion, the renal medulla is the inner portion. The cortex is sort of uniform throughout the kidney but the medulla is interspersed with these medullary pyramids. Now that we have understood the basic anatomy of kidneys, let's talk more about the functioning unit of kidneys known as the nephron. So each nephron is fed by a single afferent arteriole. So what happens is the renal artery that enters the kidney splits into smaller and smaller and smaller arterioles which make up the afferent arteriole. And these afferent arterioles, they, what they do is when they split into tiny capillaries, they form a tuft of capillaries or a mesh-like structure called the glomerulus. And it is at this glomerulus where the filtration of blood takes place. Once the afferent arteriole forms the glomerulus, whatever arteriole is exiting the glomerulus, that is known as the efferent arteriole. So this essentially takes the blood that has been filtered and eventually becomes the renal vein. So this was the renal artery that split into different arterioles which later became the capillaries of the glomerulus. And from the glomerulus, the efferent arteriole emerged, which would later join to become the renal vein. So the glomerulus is enclosed within this cup-like structure known as the Bowman's capsule. Whatever substances are filtered from the blood at the glomerulus is caught by the Bowman's capsule. Say you're making tea. You want to pour the tea in a mug. And you place a filter over the mug and you pour the tea into it, the tea mixture into it. The tea mixture is going to have water and tea leaves, right? So in this scenario, this filter right here, this is the glomerulus. So when you pour the tea water into it, the tea leaves are going to get stuck here. But the 
tea the water with the filtrate from the tea that's going to be poured down into the cup so the cup here is the baumann's capsule so the function of the baumann's capsule is to capture the filtrate from the glomerulus so this region of the nephron is known as the renal corpuscle now how does the nephron look beyond this it sort of extends down as a tubular structure that is slightly coiled this slightly coiled structure that you see here is known as the proximal convoluted tubule we'll talk more about the function of the glomerulus and the function of these tubules in later videos the proximal convoluted tubule goes down as the loop of henle and then comes back up again so the loop of henle is a hairpin loop like structure that goes down and comes up again it has two limbs a descending limb and an ascending limb and the loop of henle then emerges and becomes convoluted again forming a distal convoluted tubule this is called the proximal convoluted tubule because it is located close to the glomerulus this is called the distal convoluted tubule because it is located far away from the glomerulus the distal convoluted tubule or dct then feeds the filtrate into this tube known as the collecting duct so the collecting duct receives the filtrate from several nephrons and then eventually opens up into the medullary pyramids so this is how a nephron looks like in the kidneys so we can say that the nephron extends from the cortex into the medulla in some nephrons the loop of henle extends way down into the medulla but in some nephrons the loop of henle is very short and ends up very close to the cortex itself now that we've understood this let's see how the nephrons are oriented or organized within the kidneys so here we have the kidney this is the cortex region the outer region this is the inner medulla and then you have the medullary pyramids so it is within the cortex that the nephron begins this is the glomerulus this is the proximal convoluted tubule and then the loop of henle goes down the medulla and comes back up again where it becomes the distal convoluted tubule and it feeds off into this orange colored collecting duct so each collecting duct receives filtrate from many nephrons and the collecting duct sort of extends between the cortex and the medulla as well which is why the medullary pyramids look like this they have striations or they appear striped because of the presence of these collecting ducts a lot of these collecting ducts empty into the medullary pyramid at the tip of the medullary pyramid which is known as the renal papillae the urine is collected by the calyces the projection of the renal pelvis we saw that earlier remember so from the collecting duct into the medullary pyramid and then into the calyces that's how the urine travels and from the calyces it all converges together to form the renal pelvis and from the renal pelvis the urine passes out through the ureter to the urinary bladder this is how the nephrons are oriented within the kidneys this is all about the anatomy of kidneys and the nephrons we'll explore more about the functioning of kidneys in future videos